It appears my mother-in-law has caught on to our new situation. After we purchased our house, she called me unexpectedly with a shocking suggestion. I could hear my sister-in-law chuckling in the background as my mother-in-law voiced her desire to move in with us. Does she think I can't hear her laughter? To be honest, the idea of living with my mother-in-law and the rest of the family is the last thing I want. I assumed my husband felt the same way. But now that they know we have a new home, are they expecting us all to cohabitate? The mere thought that my husband might actually agree to this fills me with dread. But I'm resolved not to succumb to their plans. If they're trying to manipulate me, I'm ready to turn the tables. Drawing on my past challenges, I promised myself I would stand my ground. I am Nancy Deborah, 32, working at a major financial corporation. I married Mason four years ago, and while we haven't started a family yet, it's a decision we've made thoughtfully. We are both committed to our careers, pushing for progress every day. Our goal is to stabilize our professional lives before focusing on building a home and creating a nurturing environment for future children. We've agreed to reconsider having kids once we feel more established, a decision made with sincerity, openly sharing our thoughts and feelings. As we plan for our future, I reflect on all my previous efforts. Recently, a major project I meticulously organized at work succeeded, resulting in my well-deserved promotion. My already decent salary received a significant boost. Although Mason didn't get promoted, he also enjoyed a substantial raise due to his tenure. With both of our incomes on the rise, it felt like the perfect time to finally turn our long-held dream of homeownership into reality. So, I broached the topic with Mason. I think it's time we start considering getting our own place. What do you think? His response was immediate and filled with enthusiasm. Is it time already? I could hear the excitement in his voice. He continued. I've been thinking about it too, but since I didn't get promoted, I wasn't sure if I should bring it up. Don't worry about that. I assured him. It's not like only one of us has to be earning. I was actually thinking we could put the house in my name since I'm earning more now. Really? If you're comfortable with it, then yes. Let's put it in your name. Mason replied with a smile. Great. Let's check out some model homes on our next day off. That sounds wonderful. We can't let this opportunity slip away. I responded, feeling a wave of gratitude wash over me for having Mason by my side. We share the same values, and moments like these reaffirm that I made the right choice. The following week, we kept our appointment to visit model homes. We explored a variety of designs, broadening our vision for what our future home could look like. Over the weekends, we began sketching simple floor plans together and conducting online research. During a recent visit to a construction company, they suggested that rather than leaving everything up to them, we should develop our ideas to ensure our home truly represented our personalities. Mason and I were thrilled by the concept. Even if we both admitted our knowledge of architecture and design was rather limited. Nevertheless, we were eager to learn and began to mold our vision. Despite the research, translating what we learned into practice took time. We balanced this new project with our work, taking breaks as needed. Then, out of the blue, the doorbell rang, assuming it was just a delivery. I opened the door only to find my mother-in-law standing there. Uh, mother, what brings you here so unexpectedly? I asked, surprised by her unannounced visit. Without waiting for an invitation, she slipped off her shoes and made herself at home. Mason, hearing the commotion, stepped out, equally surprised. Mom, what's going on? Didn't Nancy mention that I spoke with her a little while ago on the phone? He asked, his brow furrowing in confusion. Mason turned to me. Maybe Nancy forgot to mention it. He suggested. That's not it. Mom, I quickly interjected. It's not forgetfulness. I've just been swamped with work. I juggle both my job and our household duties, which keeps my mind racing with tasks. You're such a considerate person. Mason, your late father would be proud of how you support her. My mother-in-law said, 
her admiration genuine. She then turned to Mason. So, what's the occasion for your visit today? With a cheerful smile, she pulled a travel brochure from her bag, spread it out on the table, and pointed to a page marked with a post-it note. Mason, I've always dreamed of visiting Niagara Falls. Would you take me there, please? She asked excitedly, leaving both of us momentarily speechless, our mouths agape as she continued to press her request. Come on, Mason, think of it as an act of filial piety, she urged, noticing Mason's flustered expression. Hold on, Mom, this is a bit sudden. You can't just spring a trip on us like this, Mason managed to reply. You could join us too, Nancy. I was considering asking Anna, but if Mason's coming, we could turn it into a family trip. She added nonchalantly, Anna is Mason's sister. What are you talking about? Mason responded, slightly bewildered. Nancy is here, and I can't just take time off work. Besides, it feels strange to finance a trip for you and my sister. Strange? Not at all, his mother countered quickly. Spending money on family is a wonderful thing. Don't you agree? She turned to me, seeking my support. Though caught off guard, I stood my ground. Using one's own money for family isn't wrong, but imposing it on others is a different matter. I replied. What do you mean by that? Are you implying that I'm trying to extort travel expenses from Mason? She asked, her tone turning accusatory. I tried to clarify without sounding harsh. That's not what I meant, but it does seem like you were expecting us to cover the trip. I explained. That's outrageous. Nancy, I had no such intention. She exclaimed, clearly upset. You're making me look like the villain in front of Mason. I didn't mean to portray you that way. I quickly assured her, hoping to ease the tension. But you have to understand. Okay, there's no need for excuses. Nancy, why are you being so heartless? You must not like me, do you? My mother-in-law accused, her eyes narrowing as she glared at me. This scenario wasn't new. Whenever she visits, she often finds a reason to ask for money, which she usually ends up squandering with Anna. While the idea of supporting family may seem noble, it often feels more like extortion. This dynamic shifts when Mason gives them money out of kindness, and I worry it perpetuates their sense of entitlement. I've never been fond of Mason's mother or sister and their demanding ways. Mason once confided in me that after his father passed away, their behavior shifted toward selfishness. His father, who died when Mason was in high school, used to manage their finances with great care. With his absence, there was no one to oversee their spending, and they began to freely use the life insurance money. Anna, who works part-time and earns a modest salary, contributes to their precarious financial situation. This often becomes her excuse for showing up at our door, claiming that life is tough or that she needs a break and wants to travel, subtly hinting that she's looking for money from Mason. Before I married Mason, he seemed perpetually at the mercy of his mother's demands. There was a dependency on the care she provided after his father's death. However, since we tied the knot, Mason has started to see their true colors. Despite their frequent requests for money, he has been making a concerted effort to refuse. Recently, he began to assert himself more with his mother in response to her spiteful remarks. Such as, You don't like me, do you? Or why should I be nice to such an uncharming daughter-in-law? Mason stood his ground. Just because you're my mother doesn't mean you can speak poorly of Nancy. Didn't she just answer your question honestly? You're taking Nancy's side, his mother exclaimed, shocked. What are you talking about? I think you're in the wrong here, mom. That's so unfair, she retorted, her voice dripping with indignation. Surely. Nancy must have poisoned your mind against me. You were such a sweet child before we got married. I'm telling you that's not the reason. I genuinely believe this. Mason responded firmly, 
surprising her. She wasn't used to being contradicted like this. With a frustrated expression and her lower lip bitten in annoyance, she finally huffed, fine, and stormed out. After she left, Mason turned to me, looking regretful. I'm sorry I always make you feel uncomfortable, he said softly. No, it's okay. You stood up for us this time. I reassured Mason. Once we build our own home, we'll be further away. Maybe then we can minimize our interactions with your mom and sister. Yeah, that would be a relief. Mason agreed, his gratitude evident. The location we were considering for our new home was quite a distance from our current apartment, making it more convenient for our commutes. Our apartment was about four train stations from Mason's parents' house, but the new place would be three times farther, requiring multiple transfers. The route from the station was complicated, so unless we gave them the address, they likely wouldn't be able to find it. This move felt like a perfect opportunity to distance ourselves from the frequent and often uncomfortable family encounters. Later, we submitted our floor plan ideas to the construction company, and after three months, construction began. About eight months later, our $800,000 dream home was finally completed. We managed to carve out some time from our busy schedules to pack. Just a few days before the move, I received a call from my mother-in-law. I was in the midst of packing, so I put her on speakerphone. Hello, I answered. Nancy, when are you moving? You bought a house, right? I want to live with you, she blurted out, her voice unusually high-pitched, catching me off guard. In the background, I could hear Anna, my sister-in-law, snickering. That's fantastic. We can make Nancy work for us every day. Mom, you've come up with a brilliant idea. She laughed. Do they really think I can't hear them? It was clear they were planning to freeload off our move, envisioning an easy life at our expense. Honestly, I had no intention of living with them and I was sure Mason felt the same way. However, discussing our new house with them might have led them to assume we'd all be living together. The thought that my dear Mason could be colluding with them troubled me, but I was determined not to let them dictate our lives. It seemed they were trying to manipulate the situation to their advantage. If that was their plan, I knew I had to stay one step ahead. I informed them of our moving date and immediately my mother-in-law and Anna outlined their plans. We'll come to your apartment in the afternoon that day. Take us with you in the car, and make arrangements for the movers too, they demanded before hanging up. Of course, I had no intention of fulfilling their demands. Just as I was about to discuss this with Mason, I turned around to find him standing there. Mason, were you listening? I was about to take a break and talk to you about this. Was that mom on the phone just now? He asked. Yes, I was going to bring that up too. Why did you tell your mother about our new home? I questioned, a bit taken aback. It's not quite like that, Mason explained. The last time mom visited, she saw the floor plan for our new house lying around. She's been pestering me about it every day since so I eventually gave in. He confessed, clearly regretful. Nancy, I'm sorry, you don't think I intend to live with them, do you? He quickly added, concern etched on his face. Of course not, Mason, I reassured him. After hearing that phone call, I think it might be better if we cut ties with them. Mason's expression darkened a fury I had never seen before brewing within him. It was clear he was on my side, which relieved me immensely. He explained further that his mother had taken an unhealthy interest in the layout of our new home, pretending to inquire casually while bombarding him with questions about the number of rooms and other details. This conversation only solidified our resolve. We agreed it was time to set firm boundaries and protect our new life together from unwanted intrusions. I was even more determined to stand up against my mother-in-law's overbearing behavior. I had reached my limit. With her dictating terms and causing chaos in our lives, 
It was time to turn the page. I was ready to settle this issue once and for all. The day of the move finally arrived. Mason and I had arranged for the movers to transport our belongings in the morning, and we drove to our new home. By the time we finished unloading and organizing everything, it was already past 2 p.m. While taking a break, we checked our phones and found dozens of missed calls from my mother-in-law. She called me too, Mason said, his voice weary. Just then, as if on cue, she called again. I answered, putting her on speakerphone. Hello, Nancy. Where are you? I told you I'd be at the apartment this afternoon, didn't I? Yes, you did say that. I replied calmly. So what can I do for you? What do you mean? You didn't arrange for the movers. I've been waiting at home, and not a single truck has shown up. I had to come to your apartment myself. Is that so? Well, that's too bad. You know I didn't arrange for any movers, I said, maintaining my even tone. What? That's not the agreement. Where is your new house? She demanded, clearly flustered. Do you think I'd tell you? I shot back firmly. A stunned silence fell on her end. She probably thought that as long as Mason was involved, she could manipulate the situation to her advantage. But Mason had changed. He was now my staunch ally, committed to severing the unhealthy ties with his family. With all my pent-up frustration ready to be unleashed, I continued. Just to let you know, neither Mason nor I have any intention of living with you too. From now on, please keep out of our lives. What are you saying? Your opinion doesn't matter. It's up to Mason to decide. At least tell me where the new house is. Right now? How are you going to get here without even knowing the address? I countered. This house is in my name. I have the right to decide who lives here. If you two just barge in. It's trespassing. My mother-in-law was taken aback by my assertiveness, and the silence that followed spoke volumes. The dynamics had shifted, and it was clear that Mason and I were finally taking control of our lives. And I'll sue you if you trespass. I declared, my voice steady. Her incredulity was palpable. Trespassing? How rude to say that about your husband's family. At that moment, Mason intervened with a steely tone I had rarely heard from him. Family? The family I respected? My father is gone. What remains now doesn't resemble the family I once knew. What are you saying? Mason? My mother-in-law faltered, disbelief creeping into her voice. After that last phone call, I've had enough. Just sharing blood with you is embarrassing. From now on, my family is Dave and Nancy. I no longer consider you two part of my family, Mason declared firmly. Wait, Mason, don't say such things, she pleaded, her voice cracking. Don't bother us again, got it? Mason shot back before ending the call, not waiting for her response. He quickly adjusted his phone settings to block her number. Hey, Mason, are you really okay with this? I asked a mix of concern and support in my voice. Yeah, I finally realized that mom was just using me. I feel completely relieved now, Mason said, a genuine sense of freedom washing over his face. He looked lighter, finally free from the manipulative ties that had held him captive for so long. This was a turning point for us as a couple, successfully severing the unhealthy connections with my mother-in-law and her daughter. With Mason ceasing all support, they were forced to adapt drastically. Without his help, they struggled financially. My sister-in-law's part-time income was barely enough, and my mother-in-law, long accustomed to being a housewife, found herself compelled to seek part-time work. Unfamiliar with the working world, she faced numerous challenges and often encountered disapproval at her new job. Meanwhile, Mason and I relished our peaceful life in our new home. There were no more unexpected visits from my mother-in-law, and our lives felt truly stress-free. I am endlessly grateful to Mason for believing in me and for his courage in cutting ties with his toxic relatives. Whatever challenges may arise in the future, 
I trust that Mason and I will support each other and navigate life together as a united team.